Welcome. You're listening to the Bulldog Educator Podcast, hosted by yours truly, Kirsten Wilson. Thank you so much for listening. Content produced in this episode and other episodes of the Bulldog Educator are by my co-producers, Sarah and David Galvez. Music created for the Bulldog Educator is by David Galvez. Podcast platform is through anchor.fm. Welcome to another episode of the Bulldog Educator with your host, Kirsten Wilson. In this episode, I am going to be talking to you about something that is near and dear to my heart and has been a um, effort or a pouring out of love in regards to online learning. This episode, we're going to be talking about an instructional model in online learning. Before COVID-19, before many schools even considered online curriculum or content as something to understand, before we were where we are now, I came to a place as director of curriculum and instruction in my current job for the state virtual program where I realized my teachers needed a clear path or guide for how instruction was supposed to work in our online world. In fall of 2019, I was very fortunate to attend a collaboration conference for our state that included curriculum coordinators and educational leaders from districts all over our state. We were given the book, The Art and Science of Teaching by Marzano, and over two days we drank from the proverbial fire hose as we learned about the many components that go into making a strong and clear instructional model. I had already had some background in curriculum writing and my previous educational learning and experiences with previous positions. I understood the need Uh, for a cycle of feedback and evaluation, and I knew the importance of a balanced role between curriculum, teacher, and student. What I needed was to get my head around how that played a role for my organization, my teachers, and the students we educated. When I was at this collaboration conference, I was exposed to the idea of proficiency scales. Much like what I was familiar with, we called the line of progression, which I had learned and adopted in my practice in a previous instructional leadership role. I also learned about the lesson line presented by one of our Department of Education experts, Dr. Tiffany Pride, who is presently Director of Curriculum and Assessment for our Department of Ed in our state. It was at this conference that we were asked to create this working idea of an instructional model that we could continue to iterate with after we left and shared with our schools. I had attended this conference alone without my team, but immediately started reaching out through texts and emails asking, do we have an instructional model? Which they soon responded um, from the course design and development team. We use the ADDIE model or the ADDIE model, model, which then sent me on a quick Google search of the ADDIE model. I discovered the following as a definition. The ADDI model is the generic process traditionally used by instructional designers and training developers. The five phases, analysis, design, development, implementation, and evaluation represent a dynamical, flexible guideline for building effective training and performance support tools in an online environment. This came from a description of the ADDI model in 2018 um, and was retrieved from the instructionaldesign.org page. When the ADDI model is an approach for online, while the ADDI model is an approach for online course design, it didn't really address the process of instruction in an online synchronous, asynchronous approach that mirrored what our organization was doing nor what it could be doing with a vision of growth for moving forward. So I continue to dig further with my team regarding our approach for instruction beyond the model for course design. What was established was that we had exposed our teachers over the years to a little bit of this and a little bit of that. However, there was no real clear instructional model. At that point, I went in pursuit of an instructional model for online learning. After many Google searches, a phone a friend to other online colleagues in my same role, I came up with nothing that was extremely clear nor based on solid evidence-based research on whether it was beneficial for educator effectiveness or have a positive impact on student learners. 
From there, I determined that an instructional model appropriate for our organization, the students we serve, and our teachers needed to be created. For this imperative task, I pulled from many sources. The book that I mentioned before by Marzano, Focus, Elevating the Essential Essentials to Radically Improve Student Learning by Mike Schmoker, Innovator's Mindset by George Kuros, Collective Efficacy by Jenny Donahue, Learning by Doing by DeFore DeFore, Eker, Minnie, and Matos, Innovate Inside the Box by Kuros and Novak, The Transformative Power of Collaborative Inquiry by Donahue and Velasco, Feedback, The Hinge That Joins Teaching and Learning by Jane Pollock, Learning Targets by Moss and Brookhart. In addition to these, there were the lifelong growth and understanding experiences and professional learning that I have had in my um, educator learner toolbox that I brought with, with me into this um, development. And of course, the input and collaboration with my curriculum and instructional team and some of my key teacher leaders. The result, our organization's own instructional model. And this model pulls from the ADDI model and puts a microscope scope on the implementation and evaluation part of the course design model. Surrounding the delivery of instruction is the content and the context. While in our organization, the content is somewhat fixed or already designed for our instructors to deliver, the context takes into account the individual learner. This is especially important in a year like this one where context takes into account trauma, environment, community, culture, events, and experiences that impact a learner and their ability to connect with curriculum, other learners, and the teacher. Within the circle of content and context is the learning triangle. This is a balance of learning that occurs between the student, the teacher, and the curriculum and relies on a continuous cycle of feedback and instruction. Traditionally, it is thought that there is the curriculum delivered by the teacher to the, sentence, the student and one line going from left to right. However, in an online environment where students have access to asynchronous content, it requires an expanded or evolved approach where instead of learning being delivered by, um, delivered by the teacher from the curriculum in a linear one direction approach, it is in a constant motion between the curriculum, the teacher and the student within a triangle. There are a series of influences that play in this learning triangle, including backward design, unpacking the standards, collective efficacy through PLCs, student-friendly learning targets, and standard-based planning and assessment. This triangle also focuses on the science of reading. Our states focus on the skills for student success through the guide for life, proficiency scales, and goal setting. This uh, specificity in this model serves as a guide for our instructors as they consider the delivery of instruction. Additionally, to further support, if, further support effective instruction of online learning in our organization, the lesson line is addressed. With the lesson line, we share, um, we share teachers um, to take the relationships built along with the multiple modalities of formative data to determine what students need. While content may be fixed, instructional delivery of content is not, and that is where the lesson line comes into action. Based on the needs of each learner, the teacher determines where a student's needs are in regard to learning support on the lesson line. A teacher determines when direct instruction is needed on one side of the lesson line to the other end where the teacher is the facilitator of learning and where the student is the main driver. To overlay this entire process in the, is the interaction that happens with the course and the feedback that goes back to the I and the E, the implementation and evaluation piece of the ADDIE or ADDIE model, as well as the alignment pieces that are evaluated through the Quality Matters K-12 rubric to ensure that there is a guaranteed viable curriculum. This model was originally created to provide clear guides for our teachers in our organization. Teacher clarity and teacher efficacy are some of the highest correlations with effect size regarding student achievement, according to John Hattie's research, and a basis for this design. In addition to this, as Brene Brown states, clear is kind, unclear is unkind. It was my desire to be clear and kind to my teachers as they do the most important work, educating and empowering students. 
Now that many of our schools and teachers are walking into a variety of online learning approaches, I believe that this can be beneficial for those beyond our organization. I hope in some way that this provides a guide for other educators and administrators who find themselves thrust into the world of online learning. Your organization, organization or school may have other factors unique to your situation, but instead of having to reinvent the wheel, feel free to take this model and modify it to meet the instructional delivery needs of your students, teachers, and curriculum. If you would like to view this uh, model, you can go to the Bulldog Educator um, blog post, or you, which is thebulldogedu.org, where you can see the post and that is titled an, an Instructional Model in Online Learning, and you can interact with an um, interactive model that I have posted on that blog post. Um, in addition to that, I will also have this link posted um, for this podcast as well as the blog post itself in my Twitter account as well as on my Facebook account, the Bulldog EDU, where you can also access um, those, um, that information as well. I hope this is beneficial to you, and I look forward to hearing your comments on the, the blog post regarding this instructional model, and I um, wish you all the best as you guys get prepared and as we head into August and um, schools start school in a variety of different ways, some online, some blended, and some face-to-face. -face. Know that I'm thinking about all of you during this time. Have a great night, and thank you for continuing to listen to the Bulldog Educator Podcast. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Bulldog Educator, hosted by yours truly, Kirsten Wilson. You can find the Bulldog Educator on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram using the handle at the Bulldog EDU. That's at the Bulldog EDU. You can also find us and content related to education and this podcast on our blog at thebulldogedu.org.